गुड मॉर्निंग गाइस आम आई ऑडिबल टू ऑल ऑफ यू यस माय स्क्रीन इज आल्सो विजिबल टू ऑल ऑफ यू राइट यस ओके सो नाउ लेट अस सी आज ऑफ नाउ वी हैव डिस्कस्ड एवरीथिंग फ्रॉम द स्क्रैच स्क्रैच इन द सेंस वी आर क्रिएटिंग द web application using the empty project template and in that case if we want to develop any uh, suppose we want to develop a sp.net core mbc application then we need to do the required setup for the mbc services as well as for the mbc middleware component along with we have to create the controller folder manually we have to create the models folder manually we have to create the views folder manually inside the views we have to create the respected controller name folder we have to create the shared folder right everything we are doing manually do we need to do all these things manually for the mbc for the asp.net mbc application the answer is no we do not require to do all these things manually right the answer is definitely no then what do we need to do we need to use one built in project template which is provided by asp.net core framework and that project template behind the scene going to do all thing all these things for us right then what is that project template that project template is nothing but your asp.net core web app model view controller if we use this project template instead of the empty project template then visual studio automatically does the required setup for the mbc application along with it is also going to create the required folders for us so from today onwards what we are going to do we are going to use this project template so that we do not have to do all those uh, things right which we uh, normally do in order to convert a sp.net core web application to a mbc application so let us see and uh, 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 let us try to understand how we can use this model view controller project template and see what are the default files and folders by default it is going to create it and let's have a look right and then uh, but, but this is not today's main topic today's main topic is data uh, passing mechanisms right how we can pass data uh, from controller action method to view as well as uh, some state management right we'll discuss so let me show you how you can do this right so what you can do open visual studio 2022 same process click on the create a new project window uh, this filter it is optional if you do any kind of filtration so that the number of a template is going to be reduced you can do this otherwise you can go with the default and here you can see one template asp.net core web app model view controller what exactly this template saying a project a project template for creating an asp.net core application with examples asp.net core mvc views and controller this template can also be used for restful http services that means if you use this mvc model view controller project template then it is going to create application using asp.net core mvc views and controllers also you can use this project template for developing restful http services how is that possible that i am using this model view controller project template but it is also possible to develop the restful services yes that is possible why because the same controller in asp.net core mbc application or mbc asp.net core can return a action result can return a json result if it is returning action result then it is nothing but returning a view if it is re returning some uh, json result then in that case it is returning some json data that data you can return to any kind of a client client in the sense that can be web application that can be a android application angular application react application ios application that can be anything even though if you use some uh, client tools like postman fiddler that is also possible even though from the browser you can also access them so i'm going to use this asp.net core web app model view project template you can give any name whatever name you want for your project select the location where you want to store the project save the project and the solution name it can be same name as your project name even if you want you can also give a different name i'm going with the same name 
next click on the OK button, right? Uh, on the once you click on the next button, then uh, it is asking to select a project framework, right? I'm targeting, I'm, uh, I'm going to use .NET 6.0. What is authentication? All these things we are going to discuss in our coming session. But for now, I'm going with no none, right? So I'm not going to use any kind of authentication. Then configure for HTTPS. Yes, I want to access the application using both HTTP and HTTPS protocol. And here, uh, currently, I'm not talking anything about Docker. And here, you can see, do not use the top-level statement. Means I want a program class main method. If you do not want program class and main method, directly want to write the statement, then you can uncheck this checkbox, right? So I'm, I want a class and method, and that's why I'm using this one. Um, now, click on the create button. <laughs> Right. Once you click on the create button, then it will take some time and it will create the project. Now, now let us understand uh, the default project structure. So, so this this basically analyzer means whatever the required services, uh, right, required for your application, right, those are going to be installed. And here we are using ASP.NET Core and .NET Core framework, right. So you can see this is, these are the inbuilt. Uh, uh, what I can say, services or inbuilt uh, reference DLLs, right? What are required for your application now? Now, inside this dependency folder, what will be available? If we add any additional package for our application, that might be your entity framework code, that might be your logging package, some third party unit testing package, right? Some, uh, what I can say, a Newton subjection package. Then, by default, one packages folder will be created here, and the inside that packages, the record package is going to be created and we have already discussed it. And inside this properties folder, we are having this launch settings.json file and we have already discussed what is the importance of this launch settings.json file. It will, it will contain the settings for your development server and these settings will not be available in your production. And we have already discussed this www root folder means what now any static files if in your application, if you want to access via the web browser, right, then you need to put all those static files inside this www root folder. It is nothing but your web root folder uh, for your application, right? From outside any from any other folder, if you want to try to access any static files, right? That might be any uh, HTML file, that might be any uh, what I can say, any images, then they are not going to be accessed. Only access within this www root folder. Yes, you can rename this www root folder to something else. For that, we need to do some kind of additional settings where we need to tell what folder is going to be my web root folder, right? And then we discuss any controllers we created in our application that must be created inside the controllers folder and by default you can see the controllers folder is created and this controllers uh, right created with one controller called home controller and inside this home controller class we are having a few action method one action method index another action method privacy and another action method error right these are the different action methods that are by default created right then inside this models folder one model is there that is nothing but your Oh. error view model right by default one model is created any model you want to create you need to create inside this model folder any controller you want to create you need to create inside this controller and inside this views folder you can see we are having one controller with the name home so your home control home folder is there another folder is shared this shared folder is contains some layout some partial some errored CSS HTML, right that is going to be common for all the views right suppose you want to have a common layout then you need to define that layout right how your page should look what is the header what is the footer what is the menu right those things are not going to be changed on every page they, those are going to be the common thing right those you can put inside this layout page and you can use this layout page inside any of your particular index or privacy or any page similarly you are having some partial view right partial view is also possible so what is this layout partial view input view start we will discuss all these things in detail in our coming session and this is app setting start json file and as we have already discussed right any any configuration which which you want 
uh, right in the production throughout your application, then you need to put those settings inside the app setting state JSON file. Even you can also create this app setting based on the environment. You can create app settings start development. You can create app settings start production. You can also create app settings start what the staging, right? Even you can create your own environment and you can also use that. And this program dot CS class, as I as we already discussed, this class contains the uh, main method. And inside this main method, first of all, it is creating the web host, right? Web host, and uh, uh, not only creating the web host, and also, right, it is deciding which server to use, right? Or whether I need to use a custom server or whether I need to use IIS or I need to use both. And again, it is also going to configure some of the built-in services which is required throughout your application, like uh, uh, logging, like caching. Those are going to be provided by default right then we are using some services as, you, as, as this application is developed particularly using the model view controller approach so in this case it is using the add controller with huge middleware components or services to configure the mbc right mbc services is configured using this method then we created an uh, web application object right and using this web application object Right. If the environment is not a development, then we are using this concept, right, which will handle the exception. Then we are using huge HTTPC with what is this huge HST is high security transport protocol, right? Use exception handler. We'll discuss all these things in detail, right? Use HTTPS redirection means what now if your request is coming to HTTP protocol, then it will redirect that request to HTTPS. Use static files we have already discussed, right? If any, if you want to access right some of the files which are present inside this web root folder from your browser, then definitely you need to use this use static files middleware. And we know what is the use of use routing, right? So basically, if you want to implement pattern based routing, right, where you need to define the pattern. And based on the pattern, right, if you want to execute some of the controller action method, then you need to use map routing work, right? Along with this use routing, you can use this map controller route. Previously, I have shown you huge endpoints and inside huge endpoints, I have used to app controller default route, right? And inside that default route, uh, it is configured the default routing pattern. If you don't want that default routing pattern, then you can use this app map controller route. Even Right, and inside this map controller route, the same things is also there. Right now, it is default home controller index. You can change this uh, default behavior that is also fine. Suppose you want to provide some some uh, something some coded text like this, that is also possible. Right, so that is also possible. So this is nothing but your uh, pattern based routing. So here you need to define the pattern, and based on the pattern, the routing is going to be created. And uh, if, 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 again, with the same pattern, if the request is coming, then it is going to handle the pattern. And the use authorization, again, this is related to security concept, right? We'll discuss what exactly this use authorization once we start discussing the security concept. So this is the default project template. Now, if you run the application, then you will see some of the Right. Uh, so, so what is the default project template? Accordingly, it will display the output. Right. So you will see sample home page is there, privacy page is there, and this is welcome, and some link is there, right, which is provided by uh, .NET Core. Right. And using that link, you can start learning ASP.NET Core MVC by default. This is related to this home page, and if you click on the privacy, it is opening the privacy page. So this is the default right project. Uh, folder and file structure, which you will see whenever you create the ASP.NET Core application using model view controller template. Is that clear, guys? Yes, sir. I know. So some of the things is unclear, right? Like what is this huge exception handler? What is this huge HTTP routing, right? Authorization. These things we are going to this map controller and all these things we are going to discuss in detail in their respective uh, session, right? So now what I'm going to discuss is how to transfer the data from controller action method to a view, right? First, I will discuss data transfer mechanism and then I will discuss state management in ASP.NET Core MVC. 
right? state management means a session how you can use session how you can use cookie what is session what is cookie right all these things we are going to discuss but now let us start with this view data right actually uh, if someone ask you right in the interview how to pass data from the controller action method to a view then you need to tell there are many mechanisms right there are many mechanisms available in sp.net core mbc to pass the data from the controller action method to a view right and it is not different than our sp.net mbc those people who are working uh, those people who are having some experience on sp.net mbc they might be know right that there are something called view back view data temp data and strongly typed view model right so basically uh, using this view back view data team data strongly typed view model we can pass the con uh, data from the controller action method to a view even from one controller action method to another controller action method either within the same controller or within a different control that is also possible right all these things we are going to discuss right guys anybody having any idea related to this view back view data team data No, Anybody sir. having any anyone who have worked with the sp.net mbc? Yes, sir. Means uh, it will pass values from control to view, uh, view back and view data. It will not preserve so in temp data. I think it will preserve uh, that value for uh, right. some time. Right. right. For the next subsequent request. But if you want, then you can also change this default view. Right, everything we are going to discuss. Let us start discussing with view data. Right, so view data in MBC application passes the data from the controller action method to a view. Right, and if you go to the definition of a view data, then you will see right, it is a property which is defined in the controller class, and the return type of this property is view data dictionary. And if you go to the view data dictionary, then you will see. Actually, it is inheriting from I dictionary object and where I dictionary means you know what is it is nothing but it's a dictionary and we know dictionary means it is going to store the data in the form of a key and a value pair and in this case the key is going to be a string and the value is of type of object object means you can store any kind of data inside a view data right let me go and explain this thing right suppose I'm in the home controller if you go to the definition of home controller, then you will see there is something called uh, temp data, view data, and a view back, right? Three things are available now. Now, if you go to the view data, then you will see it is it is a property, right? It is a property defined in the controller class. And what property? It is having both set and get. That means using this property, we can not only set some data, but also we can fetch the data. And what is the return type of this property? View data dictionary. And if you go to the definition of this view data dictionary, then you will see it is nothing but it is inheriting from I data, uh, I dictionary object, right? So I dictionary means what? Now I dictionary means it is a dictionary, right? So it is a dictionary in which you can store the data in the form of a key and a value. And in our case, in our case, this key is nothing but a string. String means you can specify only string key name. And this object is, is you can see object and here it is putting a question mark, means it is a nullable type, right? So you can store any kind of data, including null value, right? So let us proceed and see how we can use this view data in our application, right? So what is the use? View data in sp.net core MBC application is used to pass the data from the controller action method to a view. We can display this data on a view, right? As we are passing the data to a view using view data, then we can also display those data inside the view. The view data works on the principle of a key value pair. Why? Because it is inherited from the dictionary and the dictionary means it is a collection of a, a key and values. And in that case, right, uh, the key is going to be of type uh, string and the value is of type uh, object. As it is working on a key value pair, this type binding is known as a loosely binding. Why it is loosely binding? I will tell you. Right. Once I show you the practical lens, right? Even though you can pass object, we can pass any 
data in view data like normal integer string right anything right anything means as you know object is the superclass of uh, all the dot net types right as it is the superclass you can pass any data integer data string data student data collection anything you want to pass right you can pass using the view data view data uses view dictionary type we have already discussed data is stored in object format we have discussed view data is available for the current request it will destroy on redirection what it means suppose we are in action method one and we can pass the data from action method one to a view and if we redirect from that view to another view or to that action method to another action method then the data of this view data becomes small right you cannot access then how to use the view data in sp.net core mvc application right so as we already discussed it stores the data in the form of a key value pair right suppose that means you need to store the data like this so here view data we need to provide the key to whatever data we want to store that we can store here and while accessing the data from a view we need to use this at the rate symbol and using this at the rate symbol we can access the view data so basically why we are using at the rate symbol to switch between the html content to your c sharp content by default whatever code you written that are nothing but your HTML content and whenever you put this at the rate symbol means you are switching from HTML to C sharp and this is possible because we are using razor view engine right and you can access the string data suppose in this case if you are storing some string data and while accessing typecasting is not required but apart from string data and any other data you store like right uh, some integer data some boolean data some uh, decimal data some student data some uh, list of collection data right if you store any other than string data then typecasting is required because it is object then we need to convert that object to a particular data type who is on mute right so in this case for better understanding see how you can access the string data suppose you have stored some title the title of the page is student details. Then you can access that title using other view data title. This is your controller. In controller, you need to create a view data object where you need to specify the title. This is nothing but your key and this is nothing but your value. And in the view, you can access the value right by using the key property of a view data and you need to use this other symbol. This is required because by default, whatever code you written inside a view are going to be HTML and if you want to write any C sharp code, then you need to put this at the rate symbol, right? Suppose you are storing some student data, right? Now I'm not storing this uh, title, I'm storing a complex type, right? Complex type means you can see student, new student, I'm creating an object of a student, even though I can also store that student. But in this case, this is the, uh, in this case, what I can say, this is the string data, you can directly use. But in this case, this is not a string data. Then what do you need to do? You need to typecast the data, whatever stored inside this view data to the particular type, right? Particular type means here you can see view data. I'm typecasting to the particular type. Your past MVC application dot models dot student. That is nothing but your fully qualified name. So what I'm saying, whatever data is stored inside this view data, please convert it to this model, right? A student type. And then it will store the data inside this variable. And using this variable, you can access the properties, right? So let us, under, first of all, you guys understand what is view data, how it is going to store the data, how you can retrieve the data from a controller action method, what kind of a data we can store. If you're storing string data, then how we can access. If you are storing other than string data, then how we can access from a view. Is that clear, guys? Sir, can you explain the second one again, sir? In that one, this yes, one, sir, student right? object. So, so, in this case, it is a string type or it is a uh, complex uh, data type. It's object. The student means uh, what? Uh, what exactly this one? It is a complex data type, right? It is a user defined data type. The data type student we only defined, right? And we have created one class called student. Inside that class, we are having these six properties. And we are just creating one object of that type and we are storing that object inside this view data, right? And here, 
we are just type casting that data whatever stored inside c in this case whenever i am storing the student to inside this view data then don't think that the student object is going to store it will be type casted to a time right so to make you understand what i can say so so guys can anybody tell me what is boxing and unboxing um to convert uh, value type to reference type is boxing to convert uh, reference type to value type is unboxing so in this case so few data is going to store the data in which format reference type reference type, reference type. it is going Sorry, to store object the data in object format right object, object right so in this case this is this is student, right? This is a, the type of this of the data, uh, right? It's student. So basically, do you think that this student data is going to store as it is here, or it will be converted to object type, and that object is going to store inside this view data? It will convert to object and store. Right. Similarly, uh, uh, but in this case, whenever we come to view. So currently view data to student means it is holding some object type, right? Not any specific type. Don't think that at this point it is storing the student object. It is storing the, it, yes, it is storing the student data only, but that data is in the form of object type only, right? So if it is storing in the object type, then we need to do type casting. To make it simple, what I can say is, I can create a simple console application. Right, let me create a new console application. Right. Suppose I'm creating some integer x equals to 10. Right. I'm creating ob object ob uh, object y equals to x. Right. So in this case, this x is storing inside this object, but it is not storing in the form as it is. Right. So in this case, if you again try, if you again trying to access the value from the object, right? Suppose I'm creating and I want to store the y value here. By default, this is not going to be acceptable. Why it is not acceptable? Even though if you think that this is x, it is storing 10, and I'm only accessing that value, then why it is not possible? Because in this case, it is not, there is no boxing and unboxing in this case. In this case, no boxing and unboxing. But in this case, boxing is there. Boxing means what? This value type converted to object type. Clear or not? But in this case, in this case, why is storing 10? But in the form of an object data type. And if you want to retrieve that object data type, right? If you want to retrieve the value from this object data type to your actual data type, then you need to perform unboxing here. And for unboxing, you need to do some kind of a type casting, and that is possible. So in this case, you can see the this is so this is your actual data type. We are no boxing, no unboxing here as you are storing. This is boxing, and here unboxing because this is the data type of object and this is data type is integer so same case what i'm doing here so what is the data type of this student variable the data type is object not object the data type is student yes or no so in this case what is the data type of x integer what is the data type of y object type so we are storing integer into an object data type means boxing is performing and whenever we need to retrieve the value then we need to perform some kind of a unboxing without unboxing you cannot access the data the same case what i'm doing here i'm creating a variable so student means consider it as a variable like the way we are creating integer x string y the similarly here student is also a variable only what is the type of the student variable student variable type is student and here I'm storing that student or data. I'm storing the student data into the view data. But while I'm storing the student data into the view data, view data can hold only the data of type object. That means the student type variable, right? The student type variable will be converted to 
object data type and once it is converted into object data type then it is going to store it inside this student uh, uh, inside this view data similarly the case here so in this case x is not going to store as it is inside this y variable it will be converted to object data type and once it is converted then only it is going to store inside this y variable so same case here the student data it is not going to store as it is into the view data it will be converted to object data type and once it is converted then it is going to store into the view data clear guys this part yes sir thank you right and next while you are accessing you are doing the type casting and the same thing i'm doing here only this is nothing but a view data and i'm converting this view data to this type this is also type casting another way of doing the type casting in c sharp only and once you do the type casting, you can see once I'm doing the type casting, what is the type I'm provided here? Integer. So I can store the data inside an integer variable. So the same thing I'm doing here. So here I'm using var. Var means here fast core MVC application dot models dot student only. Clear, guys? Yeah. Right. So uh, let me uh, explain this thing by taking some example, right? So let me first create uh, a model, right? So let me first create a model with the name student.cs. So where we need to create the model? Any model you want to create, you need to go to the models folder, right? So let what me go. Okay. Sorry, anybody has saying anything? Okay. So student model. I have created the student model and I'm going to copy paste these things, right? So. Okay, let me close this project first. Right. So I'm creating the student model and you can see I'm having student ID, name, brand, section and gender. These are the student data. Then what I'm going to do, I'm going to modify the home controller class, right? So inside the home controller class, whatever code are there, let me remove this thing and I'm going to add my own logic. So in this case, you can see I'm creating one view data to hold the title of the view, that is student detail space. I'm creating another view data object to hold the header of the, uh, I mean, where I'm going to display the student data, that student header, that is student details. I'm going to hold for that purpose. I'm using another view data object. I'm creating the student object. So it is very straightforward. If you see, this is the student class having five properties. And uh, what I'm doing here, right, what I'm doing here, I'm just creating an instance and uh, setting the properties of, uh, right, setting the properties value. And then what I'm doing, I'm creating, uh, I'm storing the student object inside this view data. But here, but here the point that you need to remember is, here the data is not going to store as it is. It is going to store in the form of a, object only so do, no matter even though if it is a string type if it is a what i can say uh integer type if it is a, any collection any reference type right like the student whatever data it is going to be stored in the form of an object only yes if it is a string data you can access the data directly for that purpose type testing is not required but if you are storing any other data then type testing is mandatory. And in this case, you can see I'm storing some student data and I will I need to do type testing, right? So once you created this, then what we need to do, we need to create the details view, right? So as you already discussed, we can create view in many different ways. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to right click here uh, within this details view anywhere and select this add view. Select this razor view, click on the add button details i'm not going to use any kind of what i can say template model class we will discuss how to use template how to use model classes right after some time but now i'm not using this right i'm going to use the layout base right uh, and then click on the add button once you click on the add button then you will see inside this views folder or, or inside this home folder one view is going to be added with the name details.css table. It is taking some time, right? So it should not take that to time.
Okay. So you can see this is the details dot html view is created and this is the launch right now what is our intention our intention is to right access the data right so by default it is using the layout page so i don't want to use this layout page so i am setting this layout equals to no right so if you see inside the share folder layout.cshtml file is there i don't want to use this layout so this is the reason why I'm making this as null. If you want to use the layout, then you can use, you can remove it, no use, right? So in this case, what you need to do, first of all, I, as I already told you, right, whenever you access, right? So you can see this is the page title. So for page title, uh, inside my controller, one property is there, view data title, right? So title key is there. So I'm using view data title key here to access the title property. But as I mentioned, by default, these are nothing but your HTML code. And whenever you want to switch from your HTML code to C sub code, then you need to use this at the red symbol. So at the red view data at the title. As it is a string property, typecasting is not required. So whatever data you stored inside that property, that data it is going to display here. And then I'm going to use the student header property, uh, right? Student header to pull, to give the header of this uh, uh, page, right? View data header, right? And then you need to remember what is your model and namespace. The model namespace is a sample MVC web. And here, that what I'm going to use here, right? Sample, this is model namespace, right? So instead of uh, adding this model namespace in each and every page, right? So what you can do, right? Already you can see sample MVC dot models is added here. So simply you can also remove these things. That is also going to be work. So basically what uh, I mean to tell you is, so there is a folder called view import. Inside this view import, right, like, like see, if you see, by default, the dependence injection is there, right? All these namespaces are all available to all the classes, right? Anywhere you can access this, uh, you, you can access the classes which are present inside these namespaces because global namespace we are using in this case. Similarly, if you are having some classes, right? If you are having some models which you want to use throughout all the views, then what you need to do, you need to put that model namespace inside this view imports.cshtml file. We'll discuss what is this importance of this view imports.cshtml file in our coming session, right? But for now, you can put this uh, namespace here. And once you put this namespace, then you do not need to provide the fully qualified name, even though another option is there, right? What are, is that Arthuret using, right? Arthuret using and even you can also put this statement. Even though you can also put this statement here, right? And you can also remove this statement from here. That is also possible, right? So, but in this case, what will happen? Now, within this details view only, I can access the student object like this. I do not need to specify the namespace name. But if I want to access the student model in other views, right? For example, if you are creating a student controller, Inside that student controller, I'm creating four views for adding student, updating student, um, deleting student, showing the student details, right? Then do you, uh, then in that case, or in all the four views, I need to use this import statement, right? But, but so if you want to, uh, if you want to overcome that problem, right? It's not a problem if you want to overcome that repeating code again and again, then you need to, add that namespace inside this view import of the CSHTML file, right? With this, the changes is gone. Now you can see, I'm using this view data dot student, but in this case, it is not storing any string data. So I need to convert that data to a student type, right? And here, instead of a bar, you can also write student no issue, right? If you are getting confused why I'm writing bar, you can write this, but you can, as soon as you write this, then you will get one work, why? Right, see, if you put bar, then by default, what is the type you will look at this? This is student question mark, student question mark. Question mark means it might be stored some null value, right? So that means 
it might be possible that the student object what you are retrieving it doesn't hold any value so in that case it might be null as it, it as it contains some null value you can use this null coalescing operator to overcome the warning even though if you remove this null then it will not cause any problem it is just warning warning can be avoided but uh, but try to minimize the warning as possible as, as right so i'm putting this question right so why i'm going to do this student question mark i don't know what data it is going to return so better use this var keyword right who will going to do all these things right then what uh, right once we have the student object right and you can see here i'm making a code block code block means if you want to write any c sub statement see in this case only accessing one value so i can directly write this at the statement right at the report here i'm writing a c sub statement so whenever you are writing any c sharp statement then you need to create a c sharp code block and how to create a code block and we know if you want to create a block then you need to use open and close curly braces in c sharp and what you need to do just put this at the red symbol at the red colon uh, open curly braces and close curly braces and this is nothing but your code block right and this code block you can write here even though you can write here anywhere you can write right even though you can write before this here. That is also possible, right? So once you do this, right, there is no such restriction that you should write here, right? Once you have this student object, then you can access the properties, right? And we know this is a C sharp object. So I need to use Arthur symbol student dot student ID, student dot name, student dot branch, student dot section, student dot gender. So this is how you can access what your data inside a view from view data, right? Now, if you run the application, then you will see the student information, right? By default, why it is not showing. Can anybody tell me why this page is not loaded? The pattern has been not yet matched. Sorry? The pattern need to be matched. No, no, pattern definitely was, but why? Because by default, what is the default route? Home home index. Index. So the default action method is home and index. But in our application, is there any index action method available? No, oh, only details. No. This is the reason why it is not showing. So in order to show this detail space, what we need to do, we need to go to home slash what method? Details, Details action method, Details. right? And once you look at this, right, you can see student details page. This is nothing but your uh, student details page, nothing but your what I can say, uh, the head, uh, uh, title, right? And this is nothing but your student details, the header, and these are nothing but your student data, right? So whatever we share, right? If you look at this layout page, right, layout page, so there is a title, right? What is the title you can see? Title is view data title, sample MVC web, right? So sample MVC web, so this is the reason why you can see the title, it is showing student details page, sample MVC web, right? Because in that case, whatever the title property we have set, that is coming, plus it is adding sample MVC web, right? And then the second thing, uh, and you can see this title is ignored in this case. Why? Because we are using the layout page. And if you don't want to use layout page, then what you need to do, you need to use layout equals to null, right? Net layout equals to null. And in this case, why I'm not, right? Yeah. So in this case, now, if you run this application, then you will see whatever the title we have said that is going to be displayed. Right, see, student details page, this title we have set in our controller action method, right? If you go and check, this is nothing but your student details page. And the header, header nothing but this is your header, student details we have set. And the student data, right? These are the data, ID name, section, branch, gender, right? Whatever we set, that what you can see here. Clear, guys? Yes, sir. Right. So, so this is query. how. Yes. 
Yeah. Uh, can you go to the view page? While we are accessing the data in the view, uh, mm -hmm. there uh, after at the rate uh, there is a I mean question mark is there right? Is here also it represents null or it is the syntax? It is not a syntax, right? So null means what? See, if I remove this, then I'm getting one warning. Can anybody tell me what is the importance of this question mark here? If I'm putting this question mark, then what will happen? If I'm not putting this question mark, then what will happen? Can anybody tell me? It's a null one actually. If the question mark, it will also accept null values. No, no, that it is not so the same, right? In so this case, if we, it, if student data student ID is not available at that time, it will not. Uh, if you put a question mark, uh, it will uh, it will not give an exception. No, no, it is not student ID. So basically, if your student object is null, and if you are trying to access the student ID, then you will get null reference exception. Student ID is available or not available, that doesn't make any sense. In that case, if student object itself is not uh, uh, available, right? If the student object is null, and if you are trying to access the student ID, then you will get a uh, non-reference exception. And if you put the question mark, then what will happen? Now, if the student object is not null, if the student object, sorry? Yeah. If the student object is not null, then only it is going to access the property. If it is not null, then it will not make a call to the student. Clear, guys? Sir, that C sharp code, uh, where else can we write, sir? You have written it in head head also, right? Can we write yes, that yes. in body also? So, yeah, I have shown you that you can write here also. You can write here also, no issue. Clear? Now, if you run the application, then also you will get the same output. Clear? New data concept clear, guys? How it is internally stored the data? How it is internally stored the data? What data type it uses to store the data? In key value. Key value. What is the type of the key? Object. So, sorry. String. Object string. Or string? String, string. String, right. string. What is the type of the value? Value type is going to be object, right? So you can say the string is the key and object is value. As it is storing the data in the form of object, is there any kind of a boxing and unboxing available when we are storing? The data? Yes. Yes. Boxing and unboxing is good from the performance point of view or it is bad from the performance point of view? Bad. Sorry, uh, I mean, sorry. Uh, can you explain unboxing um, one more time? So sorry, see, this box see, see, boxing and unboxing concept is not related to this thing, right? For that thing, uh, uh, this is uh, boxing and uh, unboxing. It, it's a very simple C sharp concept, right? So I've already closed that example. If you want to learn what is boxing and unboxing, once the session is completed, please be safe. Yeah. Okay. Boxing I'll explain and once the session. Boxing and unboxing. Mean. I will explain once the session is completed because if I'm explaining that the concept again here, right? It will be a waste of time for them. So it's not related to ASP.NET core. It is completely a C sub concept, right? I will explain once the session is completed. Clear, guys? So in this case, if you are storing the data in view data, view data right, then what are the problem? The first problem is boxing and unboxing. Boxing and unboxing is bad from the performance point of view. Then what is the second problem? The second problem is if we misspell the key name, right? Student. I put student two. Am I getting any uh, here title? I'm putting title one. I'm putting header double R, right? Am I getting any kind of a intelligence or a compile time error? No. 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 So if you are not getting any intelligence or compile time error, it will make your development work easy or a development work difficult. Difficult. Okay. 
typical so it's very serious typical and you and you will only come to know about the error when you run the application right so suppose i'm executing this see at that time you will not get any kind of a data here header is not available details is not available and we are not getting error why we are not getting error because we are using this a uh, uh, question mark right to avoid the runtime error now try to access this right now try to access because because whenever you are writing any code always try to write the code in such a way that you should not get any kind of a exception exception should be avoided right so now you can see what i'm getting i'm getting object reference not set to one instance right we are getting the error why i'm getting the error right why i'm getting the error because in this case this student to this property is not available as it is not available the student is null and in all the object i'm accessing the student id right but if i am not putting this uh, but if i am putting this question mark then i will not get the error right? but i will not get the data as well right so you need to make sure you should not get any uh, you should not get any kind of exception plus you should get some intelligent support so that the compile them so if you misspell the key name right you should not get any error right so in this case if i am misspelling the key name i'm not getting any compile time error i'm not getting any uh, what i can say run time error and even though i'm not get any intelligent support we should avoid all these things right so this is the uh, if someone ask you what is temp data then you need to tell temp data is one of the mechanism to pass the data from the controller action method to a view temp data internally make use of uh, dictionary right that means we need we, we are going to store the data in the form of a key and a value pair where key is of type string view data view data yeah, yeah, view data. And the value is of type uh, object. Object means we can store any type of data. As it is storing, as it is working on object data type, means boxing and unboxing is required. And uh, we know boxing and unboxing is bad from the performance point of view, right? So we need to avoid using view data in our application, right? And second thing is that if we are using view data, then we will not get any intelligent support and we will not get any compile time error if we misspell the key name inside a view. Clear, guys? Yes, clear. So these yeah. are all cons, pros. What are the pros for using yeah, There is no pros. Right? So you should avoid using uh, view data in your application, right? And if you very small information you want to put, then you can put like view data dot title. So this is a very small, small in the sense that uh, it's a very small uh, data. But, um, so you can put uh, inside a view data, but always try to avoid using view data in your application. But yes, this is one of the mechanism available which you can use, right? So the next uh, concept what we are going to discuss is view map, right? So like view data, view bag uh, is also uh, a mechanism uh, sorry question. i have one yes. question uh, you yes. said only it will uh, it will applicable for current request right so can you show me once yes, yes suppose suppose i'm creating another request here public i'm creating view result and i'm giving the page name as a privacy right and making this as a return view. Right? So I'm creating a view or uh, privacy page, right? And what I'm going to do uh, inside this details view, I'm accessing this page. Right, view data and all these things. Now I'm going to the privacy page, and inside this privacy page, let me do one thing that layout equals to norm. Layout equals to norm. Okay. So, uh, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to copy paste everything, right? Everything available inside this details page, I copy and paste it inside this uh, 
privacy page, right? So now let me run the application. Go to home slash details. You are getting the data as expected. One request is completed. I'm making another request to the privacy page and see what will happen. Am I getting the data? No. So that means whenever the request is completed, the view data is destroyed. The data, what they hold, they will become not clear. Yes, sir. Clear, guys? Yeah. Okay. So the next uh, concept, then, what? So you went to you went to the privacy page, right? Then it is a new request, right, sir? No. See, privacy page means first, first request. First of all, I make a request to the details page. And when I make a request to the details page, inside the details view, it uh, it will access the view data, right? And when I request to the privacy page, means another request comes. Another request comes means inside this request page, also view data is there, right? But that value become null. But instead of view data, if I use temp data, then I am able to access the data. Right. For example, okay. Let, let me explain the temp data at this time only. Instead of a view data, what I'm going to do, I'm using temp data. Right. right? Instead of a view data, I'm using temp data. Right. And if I'm going to the detail space, instead of a view data, it is same as view data. So I'm doing this thing. And instead of a view data, I'm making this as a temp data. Clear, guys? So now run the application. I'm setting the data at one place only. Where? Inside the details action method. So I'm getting the data. I'm now I'm going to the privacy page. Right? I'm not getting the data here. Why I'm not getting the data? Because you can only access the data right inside an action method. And here Right uh, uh, here inside the action method, we have not written the data. See, in this case, this data you can access this same data you can access inside this privacy action method. Right? I will show you this example after some time. Right? How you can access this same data? Right? Currently, uh, you are not access, uh, able to access, even though even though if you think that this data is available. Right? So if you put this test statement here. Right, temp data, and what I'm doing here, temp data dot title, temp data dot header, right, and here temp data dot student. Right, I'm doing here like this. Right, so in this action method, this temp data will be available. Right, let me run the application. Home details, you will get the data and the home privacy. You are not getting the data. Why? You should get it. Value is not keep it. Sorry, keep, keep it. Keep. Am I doing anything wrong? It is just keep our peak. No, that is a different story altogether. Okay, we don't have to assign it again. Maybe we can use it just like that. You can see temp data here. I'm setting the value. I'm setting the age. I'm returning the value, right? And then this is method two, and method two. I'm also checking whether this key as oh, you have to convert that into the appropriate value type, right? 
right? So, okay, okay, I will come, I will come to this example temp data, right, after some time, but let me first complete that view back on, right? I, I will explain this temp data definitely. But in this case, uh, once you redirect, then the data becomes null. Right? Data becomes null in the sense, uh, the view back will become null. I'll come to that example temp data because uh, we need to go step by step. So mixing everything will doesn't make any sense. Or, so in this case, uh, right? So this is our example, and in this example we have used, and when redirection occurs, this view data becomes not right. And uh, now, now what I'm going to explain view back, right? I, I I will come to that point, right? What is temp data? How exactly temp data keep the data for the next request for the subsequent request, right? All these things. What is keep method? How you can keep all the temp data? How you can keep a specific temp data value? Everything we are going to discuss, but uh, uh, one by one. But first of all, you need to understand this view data once redirection occur, right? Once you go from this action method to a different action method, right? Then the value becomes null. So next, what we are going to discuss is we are going to discuss view back. So it is another mechanism, right? It is another mechanism in the sense, uh, like uh, temp data, view back is also used to pass the data from controller action method to a view, right? And if you go to the controller class, then you will see, let me go to the controller class. If you go to the controller class definition, then you will see uh, that view back, it's a dynamic property. Viewback means it is a dynamic property. And if you guys know what is dynamic property, can anybody tell me what is dynamic property? Uh, this dynamic type, not it's a, not a property, it's a type. Can anybody tell me what is dynamic data type in C sharp? It can store any type of data. It can store any type of data, yes. But how is that possible? Uh, it is stored in the form of object. How is that possible? See, in this case, if I'm declaring integer x equals to 10, I can declare also dynamic y equals to 10, right? So in this case, so in this case, what is the data type of y? It here, what is the data? Here, what is it the data type of variable? No, no, look at them. What is the data type of x? Int. Int. Integer. What is the data type of Y? Integer. Integer. Integer only. Integer only. If you move your mouse pointer over Y, then it is saying dynamic Y, right? Yeah. But what exactly happening now at runtime when whenever you run your application, right? Whenever you run your application at runtime, based on the right hand side data it will evaluate the data type. And in this case, at runtime, what is the type of data? Ten. Ten, mm -hmm. means you say, 10 means it is an integer. So at runtime, it will decide the data type which uh, data type of y as integer. Now, if you create another variable j and if you assign y, then it will not give you any compile time error. Why count? It will not give you compile time error. Because at runtime, it will resolve the data type. If the data type is integer, then that is fine. If other than integer, then it will give you runtime error, right? But not in the case of a compile time. And again, in this case, we do not need to do any kind of a boxing and unbox, right? Because here we are not storing the data in the form of object, unlike a, the view data, right? In view data, we are storing the data in the form of an object. But in dynamic type, we are not storing any object, right? The data, whatever as it is, it is going to be stored as it is. Right? So 10 means it is going to be stored in the form of a 10 only. It is not going to convert it to object type and then the object type data is going to be stored. Again, while we are accessing, we do not need to do any kind of unboxing. right? So if we are using dynamic data type, then what will happen? Boxing and unboxing is required, guys? No. So boxing and the unboxing is not required, right? So in this case also, viewback uses what data type? It uses the dynamic data type. So as it uses dynamic data type, so boxing and unboxing 
is not required in the case of a view well. So now you can tell me if I'm going to achieve the same thing using a view data and the view back, then which option I need to use? View back. View back. View back, obviously. Why? Because in, in, the, in the case of a view back, boxing and unboxing is not required. As boxing and unboxing is not required, so definitely it will going to store the data in the appropriate form, whichever format the data. In the same format, it is going to store the data. So in that case, the performance will be better, right? Boxing and unboxing is not required. And second thing, do you need to do any kind of a typecasting while retrieving the data? In this case, am I doing any kind of typecasting? No. No, no. I'm doing any kind, no. any no. kind of type. But instead of a dynamic, if I put object, then do I need to do any kind of typecasting? Yes. 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 Yeah. Exactly. So the second point that you need to remember, if you are using the view back, then you do not need to do any kind of a Typecasting while accessing the data, whatever the format the data, it will return the data in the same and appropriate format, right? Suppose you are storing some string data, directly you can use viewback.header, no typecasting is required. If you are storing some student data, you can directly access the student data, typecasting is not required, right? So let me uh, convert the same example, right, using the viewback concept, right? So what do you need to do? You need to use view back, right? And here it is not storing the data in the form of a, what I can say, it is not storing the data in the form of a key value pair. Directly you can write a view back dot title. This is the title variable name. And inside this variable, this data is going to be stored, right? Similarly, you can write view back dot right header. And you can store the data. Similarly, you can write viewback dot student, and you can store the student data, right? And from the UI, how you can access? You can access the data, right? So instead of viewback, right? So let me go to the details page. So here, instead of a temp data, what you need to do? You need to use viewback title. Here you need to write viewback dot header, and here you need to write viewback dot student. Right. So that's it. So once you do this thing, right now run the application. Go to the details page you will get the data as it is. So, so, so we have two options, right? Either you can use view back or you can use view data. Definitely view data is the first concept which comes into the market, right? And, but as you know, view data, you just uh, internally store the data in the form of object type. So there is a performance uh, improvement. There is a performance improvement. So secondly, they introduced this view back concept. View back concept means that performance, uh, right? That, that performance penalty, what we are getting because of a boxing and a unboxing that is avoided using the view back concept. Because in view back, it uses the dynamic data types. If you remember, dynamic data type is not introduced from the beginning. It introduced to the CSR4, right? So before CSR4, there is only one option that is view data available. Using view data, you can only store the data and you can retrieve the data. But from CSR4, the view back, once the dynamic data type introduced, then they introduce this view back, which will improvement, right? You can say it is the improvement version of a view data, right? In this case, boxing and unboxing is not there, right? And as a result, there is a performance improvement, right? It will improve the performance of your application. But again, again, the same problem is also here. What is the problem? The problem is we are not getting any intelligent support. There is no intelligent support, right? Intelligent support means I, I, I'm not, if I write the viewback property name and press enter, I'm not getting anything, no intelligent support. Right. So as I'm not getting any intelligent support, if we mistype the property name, right, title to I'm not getting any compile time error, I will be able to know only at runtime. Right. So this is the 
same same problem what we face with view uh, view data we are facing the same problem right so in mvc we can use both view data view back to pass data from controller action method to it the view data is a weakly typed dictionary object where is right whereas the why i'm saying weakly typed because it is going to store the data in the form of an object type right whereas view back is a dynamic property right so as you can see i have shown you it is going to be a dynamic property both the view data and the view back are used to create a loosely typed view right so in dot uh, right if anybody having any experience of uh, asp.net mbc they might be you know there are two type of view one is a strongly typed view another one is a loosely typed view in the case of a strongly typed view you will get in intelligent support right but in the case of a loosely typed view, you will not get any intelligent support. In this case, you can see as we are using view back, view data, right? We are not getting any intelligent support, right? So both are basically used to create loosely typed view, right? Both view data keys and view back and data properties are resolved only at runtime, right? Either you use view data or view back, they are going to be resolved at runtime only. As a result, both do not provide compile time error checking because of this we will not get any intelligent support right so if we misspell the key and the dynamic property names we will not get any compile time error rather we came to know for later runtime another important point which i have missed here that what is right few bar right okay i will update this point and i will share the document that uh, view back store the data in the form of an object and because of which we are having the boxing and unboxing issues right it is performing boxing and unboxing which will impact the performance of the application on the other hand view data it is storing using the dynamic data type which was introduced in c 4 and in that case it is not store uh, it is not having that boxing and unboxing uh, right uh, operation so if we compare both view data and view back then from the performance point of view view back will give you better performance than view data because in view back there is no boxing and unboxing but with view data we are having boxing and unboxing clear guys how about the redirections will the object store in view right, both, both are going to be not right once the redirection is happening right you know, both view data and view back both are going to be now so you cannot access right it is only right so what i'm saying view back and the view data is only for sending the data from controller action method to a particular view. You cannot pass the view back data from one action method to another action method or from one city render the data in a view, right? Uh, render the data in, in a view, then another view you cannot use, right? View back and view data is only from controller action method to a view. Clear? In which scenario can we use view data? Sorry? In what scenario you, can we use view yeah, data? Say, yeah, if, if you are having any very small amount of data, like the page title, header, right? Any, any small amount of data, in that case, you can use view data and view back. Even suppose you are a view, within a view, you are having only one property. You want to show only one uh, property data. In, in that case, instead of creating a model, you can go with this view data and view back concept. Right. Basically, whenever you want to send a very small amount of data from your action method to a view, right, then in that case, you might consider using this view back or view data. But but you should avoid using these two concepts. Clear, guys? Yes. Right. And and guys, one more point that you need to remember: this view data and the view back. It's only it's used only for right is used only for sending the data from controller action method to a particular view. They are not able, they have do not have that capability to send the data from one action method to another action method. And once they render the data, and if you try to access the same data from a different view, then you will not get because once the data is sent from controller to a view, that view bag or view data, whatever you use, that will be destroyed. That is only one request, right? Once the request completed, the job is done, you cannot access them. Clear? Clear, guys? 
Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. So next, what we are going to discuss strongly typed view, right? So strongly typed view means, as if you remember, right? If you remember, uh, while we are discussing the view action method, right? I have shown you there are four overloaded version of the view, right? So I have shown you there are four overloaded version of the view method where you can use this extension method where your view name is same as the action method name. Even though if you want to specify, you can specify the view name, right? If you do not want to execute the same view, rather you want to execute a different view, then you can specify the view name. But apart from these two, we have discussed these two, right? We are having also two other action methods. What are the action methods? One is view, which is taking the model object. Another view, which is taking the view name and the model object. That means if you want to make, uh, if you want to pass some data from your controller action method to a view, then you can use this two overloaded version. If the same method, uh, same view, you can go with this one. If a different view, then you can go with this one. So let us try to understand uh, this uh, two extension method. Mostly I will explain this one and uh, as we progress, then the last extension method, I will show you what we have already discussed these two extension method. Clear guys? We have already discussed these two extension method or not? Yes, yes. Right, now, I'm going to use this third overloaded method, right? Every method, whatever available inside this controller class, I will show you. And every property also I'm going to show you. We have already discussed this view back, view, da uh, view data. I'll show you this time data. And now I'm going to show you this, the use of this extension uh, method, right? So what is a strongly typed view, right? So as you already discussed, we have a different mechanism to pass the data from controller action method to a view. You can use view back, you can use view data, name data, right? Along with you have having the option to use strongly typed view model. The view becomes loosely typed when you pass the data using view back and view data. If you are using view back, view data, right? Then your view is going to be loosely typed view. Why I'm saying loosely typed view? Because you will not get any intelligence support, you will not get any compile time error. So as you are not getting any intelligence support and compile time error, so your view is a loosely typed view. And you try to avoid making your view loosely typed, right, right? So we need to create a strongly typed view. Why? Because once you create the view as a strongly typed view, then we will get both intelligence support as well as a compile time error check. Right. So in order to create a strongly typed view from the controller action method, we need to pass the model object as a parameter to the view extension method. And to pass the model object as a parameter to the view extension method, we can use make use of this two overloaded method. If your view name is the same as the action method name, then you can use uh, the second overloaded method. If your view name is different than the action method name, then you can use this uh, first overloaded method, right? So let us proceed and try to understand how we can do this, right? So for this purpose, what I'm going to do, I'm making these changes, right? So this is my controller and this inside this controller, I'm doing some changes. I'll show you both options, right? So in this case, you can see, I'm using this viewback.title to store the student details. Viewback.header, I'm going to use this to store the uh, student header title. So, so basically what my intention is, uh, let me first explain you strongly typed view. Then I will explain exactly what is a view model because view model concept is there. So this is title property and this is your header property and this is your student data. And this is my student data. And now what I'm doing, I'm passing that student data as a model object to my view extension method. If you look at this, if you go to this view extension method, it is taking the model object, right? Another overloaded is version is there. Suppose you don't want to use this overloaded version, right? In that case, right, other option is also available. Suppose uh, I want to execute the privacy extension method and to this extension method i can also pass the model object i will show you because there are two overloaded version right if you see in this case it is making use of this second overloaded version right so let me first use this first overloaded version 
right, where it is taking only the model object, right. So in this case, you can see this is my details, uh, student details page. Student, see here I'm using this view vector title. It uses the dynamic. It is uses the dynamic property, right? It is going to store the data in the form of a what? It, it is going to store the form data in the form of an object. Object means boxing and unboxing is required, right? So and this is your student object, and here I'm passing the student data directly to the view now now how i can use this data inside the view right so for that purpose right uh, so for that purpose what we need to do we need to make the details.csshtml view as a strongly typed view right and the question is how we can make a view as a strongly typed view in our mbc application right so for that purpose what we need to do we need to use the add the rate model directive and using this Arthuret model directive, we need to specify which is the model class for this view. Give me one minute. I will just out in my area. Okay. So basically, what this Arthuret model directive tells the right? This Arthuret model directive tells that the following is the model for this view. And in our case. What data we are passing? We are passing student object. Then what is the type of the student object? The type is student. So basically we want to tell the MBC framework that this student class is going to be the model for this corresponding view. And for that purpose, we need to use at the rate model directive. And guys, remember in this case, right? In this case, M is going to be in lower case and this directive right whatever the class name we are going to specify and that should not be enclosed with semicolon like this right suppose at the right model then you need to specify what is your model so fully qualified name of the class whatever the data you are passing from your view i'm passing the student data student type is what is the type of this object the type is student and that should be the model for your view and how you can create this by using the at the right model directive Clear, guys? Yeah. Yes. And here, M is in a lower case, and the statement should not be terminated with a semicolon. Clear? So once you use this model directive to specify which one is your model, then throughout your view, using this at model dot, at model dot here, capital M, at model dot, you can access all the properties that are available within your student class. Like at model dot name, at model dot gender, at model dot branch, at model dot section. Everything you can access directly, right? So let me copy this thing, paste it inside this details dot CSS HTML view, right? And here I do not need to specify something like this. I can directly specify the class name. Why I'm able to uh, why I'm able to directly specify the class name because inside this view input, I'm already specifying the namespace name. Actually, even though if you want, then you can also specify the model name using the uh, namespace. But uh, it is not required because we have already specified this using statement inside our view. So this is nothing but your Arthuret model. And you and always try to put this model as the first statement of your application, even though it is not mandatory, but it is a good programming practice to put it as the first statement inside your view, right? Because, right. So you can see here, I'm specifying what is the model for my application, right? And for my application, student is the model. And here you can see, I'm specifying this using the Arthuret model directive. And here, M, I'm specifying using the lower case. So it is only going to work, right? This model is only going to work and you can only access the properties if you pass the data to this view. And here I'm passing the student data. So student object I'm passing. So I'm passing the student object means whatever the student ID property hold, name, branch, whatever they hold, right? I can access them directly by using this at the rate model directive. Right. So here you can see I'm specifying the model using the other model directive where M is in a lower case. And then I can access the properties by using this model object. And here M is a capital K. 
case, right? So at the rate model dot student ID, at the rate model dot name, at the rate model dot branch, at the rate model dot section, and at the rate model dot gender, right? Now, now what happening? I'm getting the intelligence support. I'm getting the intelligence support. Now you can see everything is available. Whatever the property student ID, it is available, right? So intelligence support. Now try to give a different name and see what happening. I'm getting the compil compilation error, right? I'm getting the intelligence support. I'm getting the compilation error because, because it is a strongly typed view. And how you can say it is a strongly typed view because we have specified the model for this view. So whenever you specify the model for your view, then using the Arthuret model directive, then your view becomes a strongly typed view. And by using the model object where M is in capital K, you can access all the properties. And here you do not need to use that. But yes, you have dot title is there. View back that header is there. How we can overcome this view back title, view back header? We'll see. Right? I do not want to use the view back title. I don't want to use view back header because these are going to be again making uh, your application code become uh, loosely typed. Right? You will not get any intelligence support, no compilation error. Right? So we can overcome this problem. How we can overcome that? What I am going to tell you. Right? But now you can see this is how you can make your view as a strongly typed view. Right? And for that purpose, two things you need to use. First of all, you need to specify the model by using the model directive where M is in capital case. And then once you specify the model, then you can access the model data right? by using the capital M model. And then you will get intelligent support and all the values, whatever you are passing right to the view that you can access using the model object. Now, if you run the application, then you will also get the output as expected, right? Let me run the application. Home details, you are getting the data as expected. And in this case, this model is this one. Now, now I'm going to use the other overloaded version, right? I'm going to copy paste the same thing here, right? So I'm copy pasting the same thing here. And from the action method, what I'm going to do, I'm using the second one, right? So now run the application and navigate to home slash privacy. I am getting this error. Oh, sorry. You need to go to this home slash uh, uh, details. This details view internally calling the privacy page. Right, clear guys? So. I have shown you how to use all the four overloaded versions of this queue extension method. Clear? Yes. Past yeah. two are basically used whenever you don't want to pass any model data. And the second two overloaded version is basically used whenever you want to create a strongly typed view by passing the model object. So in this case, whatever the data I'm passing to the view, right? right those are going to be stored inside your model right inside your model what you specify here and then you can so access those point. yes uh, before uh in the view data and uh view, view bag we will get you warning right in the null null level sorry here we'll, also we'll, you will we'll... get warning here also you will get warning right here you can see um if i'm removing this one Right, so here you can see if you remove this one and if you do not pass the model object, then you will get uh, some error, right? For example, uh, I'm not passing, I'm using this one, right? And here I'm not going to pass this one, then what will happen? Right. So you can see I'm getting the error. So if you want to avoid this kind of runtime exception, see, in this case, it is not uh, a compile time error. We are getting runtime exception because your model is null. Why our model is null? Because we are calling the view, right? But we are not passing our model object. If we are not passing the model object, then what is the default value of the model? It is based on the type. And what is the data type student? Student means it's a reference type. What is the default value of? Reference type null on the null reference object. If you are accessing any property, 
you will get the runtime exception. And if you want to avoid this runtime exception, then what you need to do, you need to use this add the rate model, uh, this question mark. Right? Right, now run yeah. the application. Right, and go to the home slash details. Right, you will not get any, but you will not get any exception, but you will not get the data. Yeah, what is your question? Uh, so one question, like uh, from now from home controller, we are calling details uh, view. Right? Yes. So from, uh, and here we are doing the return view and so that uh, it will return the view from details. Uh, yes. The below 30th line, return view privacy, that will transfer that content of this view to the privacy and the view will see, return see, from see, the... See, mm -hmm. you, you are a miscommunication. So in this case, right, in this case, it is not a transmitting. So in this case, whenever we access this home class details action method, so what is, what is the role of the controller? Can you please tell me? The controller will call the view. Um, right, controller will render a view, right? Yeah. Means which view to be executed, which view should generate the HTML. That will be the responsibility of controller. In, in this case, it is calling the details view. The details view will generate the HTML and that HTML will return back to the client. In this case, it is calling the privacy view. That privacy view will generate the HTML and that HTML will return to the client. In this case, don't think that the, the URL is going to be changed. The U, so don't, don't think that because in that case, we are only accessing the details view. That details view, the, right, as a client, as a client, I'm calling the details view. I do not know internally this details action method. I'm calling, I'm not calling the details view. I, actually, I'm calling the home slash details action method. As a client, I'm calling the home controller details action method. And as a client, I do not know internally this details action method, executing X view, executing Y view, executing Z view, that I do not know. But what is no? Once the request is completed, it is going to return me some HTML data. Why? Because the return type is view result. And that HTML data, it might be generated by the details view that might be generated by the privacy view. Clear? So in this case, actually, uh, it is not at all calling the details view. It is directly going to the privacy and getting the content. No, 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 no. In this case, it is not calling the details view. In this case, see, in this case also, if you are getting confused, if I'm writing the code like this, that is also fine. In this case, if you write the code like this, details, and if you pass the data student, is there any difference? Yeah, this is fine. Uh, now it is calling the details view directly and right. it is getting See, the, it is rendering right. the. This two statement, right? This is two statement meaning is the same, right? If I am writing details student, if I am writing only student, this two statement meaning is the same. These two statements, there is no difference. In between yeah. this statement or this statement, both are meaning is the same. Yeah, correct. So the in next, this case, next... It, it, in this case, explicitly we are specifying the view name which is going to render. In this case, implicitly it is taking this view name. And yeah. in this case, so, explicitly we are specifying the view name. Yeah, in second case, in the privacy case, the details view is not at all coming into picture. It is not at all existing. Yes, yes. It? it is. It is not at all coming into the picture because there is no way. Uh, how uh, you can you tell me how the details view is going to execute? Did we call that a details view? In this case, we are explicitly calling. In this case, it is implicitly calling. But if we are writing this statement, then is there any statement we have written where it is going to execute the details view? No, sir, because uh, earlier I think you have mentioned somewhere that uh, whatever the action method name, no, it will map that method name to the view name so that I got confused. So, say, he, he, again, again, I'm saying the same thing. That basically depends upon which view extension method you are using. In this case, if you return view, in this case, in this case, first of all, it will look for a view whose name is same as the action method name. But if you are explicitly specifying the view name, right? In this case, we are explicitly specifying the view name. 
if you do not specify the view name then implicitly it will look for the view name whose name is the same as the action method that is details yeah clear yeah clear guys how to create a strongly typed view Advantages, it will co provide compile time error checking, it will provide intelligent support, right? If you misspell the properties, right? If you do any kind of a uh, typo, uh, right, uh, typographical error, then you will be able to come to know at uh, compilation time only, right? But in our example, still we are using view data, a view bag and view data to pass the header and the title mm -hmm. from the controller, then definitely. There should be called there should be a question that should come to your mind is how we will pass the header and the title to a strongly typed view. Right. In such cases, we need to use a view specific model, which is called view model. Right. So let me explain that concept also. Right. So what is exactly? So currently, if you look at our example, right, we are having this title property, right? We are having this header. Even we are using this view bag and view data, and this view bag and view data we are accessing from our view, right? So we want to avoid this. And if you want to avoid this, then you need to use the concept called view model, right? In real time application, a single model object may not contain all the data required for a view, right? This is the point that you need to uh, remember. A single model object cannot hold all the required data that is required for a view. In such situations, you need to use the concept called a view model. View model means it is the model which is specifically created for a particular view. To understand this thing, let me uh, consider. I'm having one student model. I'm having one student address model. So I'm having two models. The student model is going to contain the basic information of the student like uh, the student name, student registration number, student branch section. Another model is there, that is student address, where I'm going to store the student the city, state, country, student uh, uh, mobile number, PIN code, all the address information. So I'm having two models. And I, in my view, right, in my view, I want to display student uh, model data, student address model data, also, some additional properties like the header of the page, title of the page, those properties also I want to display in the view. Then in that case, what I need to do, now I need to create a model, uh, right? You can put this name as a view model, whatever the name, if you are creating for student, you can say student details view model, any, any, any action method name, plus you have to add a view model, right? Suppose I'm putting, uh, if, if I'm using this, uh, if, in my case, if my home controller details action method, then I can give the name something as home details view model. If it is student controller, then I can give student details view model, right? So this is the generic uh, naming convention which we follow right? but it is not mandatory, right? You can give any name. So at the end, it is going to be class. So this class contains the student model one plus student model two plus some additional properties which are required for a view. And this view model, now we need to pass to the view, right? And this view model representation, right? This is the view model representation in SP.NET Core MVC application. Let us understand this with an example. So we are having the student class Right uh, now, we are going to create an, another model with the name address. Right, so I'm going to create another model with the name address, address.cs. Right, so I'm creating this address model and I'm copy pasting this code. Right, so the student means uh, student ID, this address model also containing the student ID, city, state, country, and PIN. And this student entity contains student ID, name, branch, sanction, and gender. So we are having two models. Then I need to create a, a right model called details view model, right? So in this case, as I want to use this inside my home controller, so what I'm going to give the model name as, right? So before that, what I need to do, I need to create a folder 
called view model. So all the view models are going to put inside this folder. So view models. Inside this view model, so I'm going to create a class. What is the class name? So which controller, home controller, which action method, details action method, home details, view model. This is the generic naming convention, what we as a, we in industry prefer to follow, right? So I have provided this. Then what as part of this view model I'm going to write, I'm going to write the required data that is required for a view, right? So I want the student data. I create a reference variable of type student. I want the address data. I create a reference variable of address. Along with the student uh, model and address model, I also want title and header. So I have created two string type properties. Now, what I need to do is, now I need to use this home detail student view model as the model for my view, right? But before that, what we need to do, we need to change the, uh, right? Uh, we need to change the code inside the home controller, right? Let me open the home controller and inside this home controller what i need to do i need to use the student view model first of all i created the student object i created the student address object and here you can see the model name is home details view model right i need to first import the namespace using what is the namespace of this model sample mvc web dot view model right so view model Right, and then what I need to do, I need to store the student. Uh, there is a property called student. Inside this pro student property, I store the student object. There is a property called address, right? Address property is there. Inside this address property, I store the address data. And apart from the student address, I'm having title and header properties. So I'm putting the title, student details space, header, student details, right? So once your view model is ready, then you can pass this view model to the view right so once you pass the view model to the view then what you need to do you need to use this view model as the model for your view right so if you go and uh, change this right so currently you can see i want to use this view model right but 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 currently if i use student view model like this i will not get any intelligence support why to get the intelligence support either you need to provide the fully qualified name like this, right? There is no student, this is home details. So you can provide the fully qualified name like this or you can move this statement to the view import statement. So what you need to do, you can put upgrade using sample.view model. So with these changes, right, you can simply ignore these things, right? So you can directly use this, right? As we already mentioned, in the while creating the model, you have to use model directive. And in this case, you need to specify small n. And once you create the model, then using this other model dot title. So viewback dot title. We have we used to earlier viewback dot title. In that case, we are getting some error. Right? If we misspell the title to title two, right? For example, suppose I'm using view viewback, right? Suppose I'm using other viewback here. So view back, right? View back dot title. I can put title to. I will not get any compile time error. Even if I'm using dot, I'm not getting any intelligent support. I'm putting this. Now just to type title to and see what happens. Immediately you will get the compilation error, right? Why? Because intelligence coming. Intelligence coming means what are the properties you can access from the model. You will get the intelligent support, but you will not get if you are accessing using the view back. Right, so even though this is the same case for uh, view data, so I'm getting the title, I'm getting the header, I'm accessing the student object model. There is a property called student inside the student property, student ID, name, branch, section, gender, and the address is there. So inside model, there is a property called address, and from the address, I can access city, state, country, and a pin. Now, if you run the application, right, and if you visit to the student slash uh, home slash details method, right, then you will get the data as expected, right? Now, visit home slash details. You can see student details. It is displaying the student details. Student address. It is displaying the student address, right? And this is the title, student details. Clear, guys? Uh, How to use view model? And, and guys, 
a few models should be used for a specific design for a particular PO. So in this case, the view model, what we created, this view model is only for home controller details action method. So this is the reason why I have provided name home details view model. Yeah, any question from but anyone? Sir, related? But sir, we can reuse now this one. Yeah. Sorry? It's a home yeah. details view model. And though we yes. created for this home de details, but still we can use for other view also. Yeah, you can other view also, but uh, you should not because every view having some uh, meaning, right? So, so you just tell me whatever I'm displaying in this details action method of a home controller. Do you think that the same data I'm going to display in other views? Ideally not. I don't, then why you should have, uh, then how you can use the same view model in other views? Yeah, but okay. uh, for example, some you view I required both data student address, but not required title and header. But uh, that this, situation this I can reuse now. No, you can reuse because in that case, the title and the header is there. No? Yeah, yeah, correct. Yeah. Right. So you should not anything which is not required. Why you should for that for in for each particular view, right? You can create a model. Clear guys? Yeah. Yes. Sir, yes. 